Hey guys, so just a little quick background on me. I'm gonna share a little bit of my testimony, how I got where I'm at, and then share some principles. The, um, for me, I grew up in the church. I, I oftentimes make the joke, I think I was born on one of the pews. I'm one of those kids, I know church, I know, you know, yeah, I was a problem child in church. But um, at eight years old, I got saved, baptized, and then at 19 years old was a significant moment for me where the Lord called me to himself. And I was at an altar, and it was almost like I saw, I literally almost saw a contract in front of me where he said, I, I decide at this point, Mike, I decide where you live, what your hobbies are, who your friends are. If you get married, I, I, it's, I own you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And, and literally at that moment, I remember thinking to myself, God, please don't make me be a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Because a little quick history, I grew up on a farm, a farm boy and, and jeans, t-shirts and flannel shorts were perfect for me. I really didn't want to wear a shirt and tie and all the pastors I knew were kind of not what I wanted to emulate. But just go a little bit forward, backwards there, at the age of 15, my parents got involved in a church plant. And so I remember talking to the, our pastor at the time and I said, hey, are we going to have like a youth ministry? And he goes, yeah, you should start one. <laughs> Go around, knock on some of the doors and invite some teenagers to come to church and you'll have a youth ministry. That's a shift. It was a big shift. Um, that was in Buena, Washington, a little tiny town. And then at the age of uh, 20, I wound up being involved in another church plant, just living with some guys trying to love Jesus. And we decided, you know, there's, a, there's like a low-income housing community right here next to us, and we're living in Mesa, Arizona on this horse ranch, five acres of horse ranch right in town. And um, we said, hey, let's just try to reach out to these kids. So we started a Friday night life, we called it. And over the next several weeks, um, there, we had like 100 kids start coming. And I was like, whoa. And then their parents were like, hey, can we come here like on Sunday morning? Uh, okay. And we, we accidentally started a church. <laughs> and I, I remember Tony, uh, my roommate, he was a few years older than me, and he goes, like, I think we have a church. What do we do with the church? I said, I don't know. Let's read the book of Acts, because they started them there, and we'll do what they... Anyway, and, and then I accidentally got baptized in the Holy Spirit, because I read the book of Acts. And uh, <laughs> true story, okay? Um, it's like, whoa, I never heard that before. I grew up in conservative evangelical churches. Anyway, now we'll fast forward a little bit. The Lord literally called me. I had visited this little town in the Pacific Northwest one time called Elma. And the Lord just said, I want you to move home. Never been there, didn't grow up there, didn't, he, but you know, he just, and how many of you understand you don't say no, Lord, because that's an oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> you say yes. And um, in Elma, I wound up helping establish another youth ministry and then from there, wound up on staff 
um, at an AG church up in Port Angeles, that rich there, for a couple years and had really felt and heard the call to missions and was invited to be on staff with a gentleman who, a uh, former AG missionary, he was part of the AG missions board that decided who became missionaries. And he said, if you'll be on staff with me for four years, I will make sure you guys go. Okay, that's where we're going. And then through one thing after another, and mostly over financial matters, we wound up not getting to stay the four years. We were forced to move back to Elma. And so I'm in a very defeated place of I had to leave full-time ministry and I'm back in this town that I really didn't want to be living in anyway. And I said, God, what do you want me to do? And I'm, I'm literally at a, another altar after a Sunday morning service and I'm just crying out to God saying, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Just tell me what it is. Church is empty. I get up from the altar. The first guy that walks in the back door is a recruiter for an insurance company. <laughs> Mike Mueller, hey, what are you doing nowadays for work? And I'm like, God, <laughs> really? <laughs> oh. The shirt and tie thing, 20 some years every day, shirt and tie. I wound up starting an insurance agency and it grew into a financial services business as well. My youngest son has taken over the insurance side of stuff. That's how I wound up in business and learned a, a crucial principle in my first year in that business, I did. I was prospecting. I was. You had, you had to go figure it out. You had to go knock on the doors and make it happen. I had quite a bit of success going on early, and then all of a sudden, every wheel off of every chariot came off. And I hit a point where I'm like, "Wow, what, what did I do wrong?" And I had this conversation with, with the guy that was training me, my district manager. He was a believer. And I remember sitting in front of our home, really angry with God. I don't know if anybody ever... Yeah, okay. And I said, God, is it too much for me to ask to feed my family. Is that too much to ask, to provide for my, that's, I'm not asking for massive wealth, I'm asking to pay the mortgage and feed my babies. And it was 24, 48 hours after that, when I was in my prayer room, and I finally settled down from a hissy fit, that I heard him very clearly, he said, Mike, it is too much for you to ask for you to feed your family because you are not Jehovah Jireh. That's right. mm -hmm. Big, big life principle for me. And he said, Mike, the key to your success is dependence. And so if, if you can take one thing away, please take this away because I don't want you to ever have to learn this the way I did. Okay, if you think you're in charge of your world, please repent now. <laughs> okay, and I'm I'm a Type A personality. I'm a, a I'm a goal-driven, oriented. Boom, boom. Let's nobody ever handed me anything. I've earned it. Okay. But it, it's become a discipline of my life, literally. Father, I just offer myself to you today. I acknowledge my dependence upon you today. Have your way. 
That's you guys. If however you make it your own, but you need to do that business with Jesus. And I understand that I'm in a room full of men who they're like, how do I balance business? How do I balance business and ministry? And and now I want to share with you a little bit of of what went on there. Um, as I said before, I helped establish a youth ministry in Elma. In about 2000, I want to say is somewhere around 2002, 3. I can't remember the date. I wish I would have wrote it down. But I remember walking out of that back door through the laundry room on my way to what I knew was going to be a very successful business day. I was going to make good money, and I did. And the Lord spoke to me right there and just said, Mike, will you pastor for me? Briefcase in hand, you know, right? And I'm like, uh, you know, once again, you don't say no, Lord. I'm like, now? He goes, no, no, no. Go do the day. Yeah. <laughs> but he was checking to see if I was still on the bench. Okay? You know, because I was... During that season, I'd speak at conferences, and I do. I, I actually filled some pulpits and did some stuff like that, but I wasn't actively pastoring. In 2006, the end of 2006, he came. And he, he spoke to me very clearly. He said, "Mike, I have sheep in this town, and I need a shepherd." Okay. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I went to um, my f former pastor, my dad, a spiritual father, and I, I shared this with him. <laughs> I was going to go share it with him, and I walk into the restaurant. Big group of people at his table. He, his family was there and everyone... He stands up as I'm approaching the table with me and my family in tow and says, Mike Mueller, you know the Lord's going to reactivate you in the ministry. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> he sat down and had tacos. Um, yeah. You have to know Daryl Beebe. He's just that guy. The key habits, in 2007, we started a church. It continued to grow. We're in a little tiny town, 3,000 people. We have one stoplight in our town, okay? And we had started a church, and it just began to grow, and I watched the sheep come in. I'd, I'd see the, the hurt, the fear in their eyes, and, and many of them were already Christians, Hadn't been in church in years. They're seeking. And then I'd see the ones who are brand new, just who is this Jesus? Same, same look, but he'd been tugging on their hearts. And I'm watching people get saved just during worship. And others being baptized in the Holy Spirit in their shower. And just stuff started happening. I'm just watching this take place. But... I share, I want to share a few key principles with you that over the last 15 years, I will just say that it's not an easy, but Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. There is a burden to this. People ask me all the time, how in the world are you pulling this off? I'm, I manage about $35 million in assets right now. I, I run... I've got some employees, I've got an agency, you got this going on, we have a church, it's not huge, 100, 100 to 200 people, um, you know, with COVID, who knows how many are going to show up, but we have an online presence, and trying to, trying to pastor the rest of the community as well, our local hospital invites me to be on their stuff, and blah, 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 and now we're building a building. And I've reminded our church often, hey, the Lord called us to build a church, and while we do that, we're going to build a building, okay? Amen. This is not an, an idea that you get to foster. It's always a calling. Don't do what I'm doing unless God calls you to do it, okay? 
Uh, John 15, 1, crucial, abide in me. I'm the vine, you're the branch. I, I can make it um, about six hours if I get disconnected from the vine. Okay? I can make it about that long if I pick up something that is not my burden to carry. He said, take my yoke upon you. Plenty of people come to me and say, Pastor, we should do this. Or even worse, Pastor, you should do this. <laughs> and, and this has just kept it very filtered. As soon as, if I try to take on a good idea, I'm immediately overwhelmed. Okay? His yoke is easy. His burden is light. The John 14, 15 has really become my core focus. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. And over the past, really over the past just handful of years, the Lord's brought that simplicity to me. I literally wake up in the morning and just love him. Oftentimes I'll just be laying in bed and just as I'm first thoughts, I just, I just love you, Jesus. And I let that, I let that literally soak into my soul of that first thing in the morning and then I focus on loving my wife and then my children and then the church and that I, that I operate from a place of love. Now I will tell you that early in my career there was a lot of activity. I'd put 30, 40,000 miles of business miles on every year driving around. I scheduled in meetings with God at least two or three mornings a week. I, and it's almost like if you've ever been in that busy season, um, I, I hope this is okay to be this frank, if you've ever had the calendar in sex with your wife, I mean, it gets stupid, but if you don't do that, it won't go well. And so I started calendaring in Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, I would go over to the church and pray. And every Saturday morning that I could, I'd go and just have this focus on because I didn't know if it was going to be a business meeting or a staff meeting. Okay, I'm an under shepherd. And so, and, and it would just, first I need to tap into the vine receive from him. I get tethered into the throne room of God. And then he would talk to me about, give me business plans. He'd give me business goals. He'd give me strategies for ministry, things that here's what I want you to do next. Now, I'll, here's my last part. As you do business and ministry, don't trade on the name. Pastor doesn't appear on my business card. I don't lead in with that. I'm in a small community, so I have clients that will show up to church and go, you're my, and you're also, oh. And they don't have a problem because I didn't do them wrong in business. It built trust for the church or vice versa. Be the same guy. There's also a practical element of this. 15 years, I've not taken a salary from our church. I'm a volunteer. We're all volunteers. So if you think about 15 years worth of pastoral salary that you get to donate back into a church, because I don't take one, but I also tithe 10% of my business proceeds, the gross, into the church, which, which helped make it so that we had a million dollars of cash to start this building process. Okay? So, then my last point, stay encouraged. Do whatever it takes to stay encouraged because you will get faced with discouragement and have a team. <laughs>